Hi Pisces, welcome to the full moon in and lunar eclipse in Pisces for uh, September 17th, 2024. It's an important eclipse. Um, it's showing us what can um, take place in the next two and a half years. So you're getting a little taste of it now. You're getting a little inkling of what could be uh, happening. The direction that the reading is going in is number six intention, playing it safe, but it came out reversed. And I think that's a good thing here. So I'm going to have a look in the book and take some excerpts out of the book. Um, I don't uh, memorize these cards, uh, although it seems pretty logical. Uh, when this card is reversed, it marks a time of moving on and something or someone new. Perhaps uh, you're making the choice yourself, or perhaps a situation outside yourself is forcing the change, such as downsizing of your company or um, the uh, sale of a house that you've been living in, for example. Uh, you have the power to break out and make some personal changes as well. Have you been feeling the need to free yourself from a difficult situation or relationship? The world is opening up for you now. Even if you've been hesitant or fearful before, uh, rest assured that you are more powerful than you think. You no longer have to limit yourself um, to play it safe. Sometimes the safest thing you can do is to take a risk. So, looks like we're kind of moving out of some of that uh, difficult Saturnian um, energy but we'll see. This is the direction that the reading is going in. Let's see what the cards have to say. The first two uh, cards, or the first set of cards rather, is where you find yourself at the time of the full moon. And um, if you are consciously or actively uh, ending something at this time, you will find that information here. Looks like you're starting something new, actually. But again, within the next two and a half years. So, that's not good. At the center uh, set of cards is you and what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what you're doing. It's all about you. So, that's the end of playing it safe, I suppose. <laughs> yep, look at that nice nice energy and uh, the outcome the outcome probable outcome actually because some things we are able to change if we have the information if we're forearmed right um, and sometimes we just have to have the experience we came here for that experience that experience is going to help us to grow and to um, learn new things Hate that glare. Okay, so nice card so far. Uh, the Magician and the Six of Cups. The past can come back, um, and we may be dealing with people and memories and situations from the past. I know I've had some dreams lately of people um, from my past. There may be some unresolved issues, uh, but oddly enough, in my dream, they did get resolved. Um, but the, manip uh, the manipulation, the magician can be manipulation in a good way. Uh, it's, your, it's your vision, it's your, um, uh, your concept of initiation, of starting something new here. You're manifesting. You have a very solar power, so it's a very energetic, outgoing, um, inspirational, initiative energy. Uh, with the magician. It's very um, young energy, so it's fiery, it's solar, it's outgoing. Um, and this could have something to do with siblings or close friends or youthful people. Um, six is bringing balance to some emotions. Uh, we don't want to make the same mistakes we have prior, especially where friendships are concerned or uh, siblings, younger people, um, but places even can have a, a meaning for you. You may even have some deja vu energy here with this card. 
um, but it is my Mercury in retrograde card and uh, things and in, in situations people from the past come forward so we can change the way we, re we react to situations. With that you have the Four of Pentacles which is uh, the Sun in Capricorn and that is about empowerment and that really goes very well with the Magician card. Four of Pentacles is uh, can be the miser card. It's holding on, but it depends on what you're holding on for. If you're holding on to create good foundations for something new, super. Um, that's empowering. But if you're holding on out of fear, less empowering. Uh, in fact, it kind of takes away, and then you have what follows the Five of Pentacles, which is misery and financial instability. Um, so there has to be a nice balance with that Four of Pentacles. But it is creating good, strong foundations, empowering yourself, empowering others, uh, is the Sun in Capricorn. Some things might feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, with this new beginning that you're, that you're dealing with, but it is about creating those strong foundations. My eye is really going towards, and they don't usually, going to those feet on the pentacles. So for me, it does have a lot to do with, you know, how you stand, um, what you stand on that creates the good, strong foundation. And I do mean that metaphorically. However, uh, you may have a shoe or feet um, issues during this uh, period, or ankle even. Hmm. You know, she, Pamela Greer, who um, did the uh, visuals for this, was always, there was always a reason for everything that she did. Now, I find it interesting that the pentagram is upward on both of these, and on these, they're moving towards the back. I really just only noticed that. I guess it's because I was drawn to the feet. So do be careful. Do be careful of um, minding your, you know, wear good shoes. Uh, mind what you're standing on. Mind what you're walking on. Um, buy good shoes. They're a good foundation. Make sure you have good shoes. Don't walk on bad shoes. I know that's a, a weird thing to say, and it's maybe an aside, but um, also don't compromise your um, a good foundation. Don't take shortcuts. Don't compromise a good, strong foundation. Um, maybe it's not a good idea to start something if it's not um, if there's not a good foundation. If there's not a good, strong foundation. Hmm, I find that interesting. I'm just seeing if I get any more information on that. Um, okay, I'm going to leave it there. It can also be, again, pointing to the, the past. And in the past, if you haven't done that, just Pisces is notorious for that. Uh, they get something in their head and they do it and they're maybe not fully prepared for it. So there should be a good preparedness um, with this new concept and vision that you have. Creating good, strong foundations that are empowering. The emperor, the, the, uh, the four, which is all fours reflect back to the major arcana, and that would be the emperor. And that card always says that if you haven't built good, strong foundations, you may have to start all over again. Um, and so maybe this is a bit of a warning. And maybe because of the past, you have done something like that. And again, that could be kind of playing it safe. But it's the reverse, isn't it? And so we're, we're not playing it safe. Uh, it is taking a risk. Interesting. Okay. Um, 
You are the death card and the full card. There can be a lot going on in an internal on an internal level. Uh, when it's two major arcana, the death is the purification and transformation of a situation. The end of one thing, well, the new thing begins, and everyone is subject to uh, uh, deaths. In fact, they call sleep the little death, so everybody has to sleep. And uh, where do we go? <laughs> I, I, that always, I find that very curious. Um, but in any case, there is the... Um, the transformation and purification of a situation and it is the end of one situation well beginning a new adventure with the full card um, these are major things they're not small things these are big internal changes and um, it, this is the risk card because it's it's um, it's taking a leap of faith hoping that everything will work out okay I do think this is a creative venture for many. Um, there is potential here. There's a lot of potential, uh, but we have to give it time. It's like the seed that you plant, and it needs time and nurturing, and in its own time it unfolds. Now speak of the, uh, the emperor. Here we have that card. Um, you can become an authority on something in the next two and a half years. Um, and that may even be how to put down good, strong foundations. Um, like I said, the emperor is, if you have created good foundations, the structure stands and you can um, move forward. And if not, you have to go back and rebuild. So I really do feel like there's a bit of something that we're, we've learned from the past that we can apply to this particular situation. And this is definitely authority. For some, if you are um, a male, you may become a father. You can start your own business. You can be the boss man. But you can also just be an authority. Uh, and remember, with the emperor he can make rules and regulations for the good of everyone or he can rule with an iron fist and I think those are bad foundations <laughs> um, but that's just my opinion okay and so those are three major arcana cards There's some big sweeping changes happening, especially on an internal level. But I really do feel that it has something to do with your creativity, um, with taking instruction, but also giving instruction. Um, perhaps marriage for some, uh, or engagement even. Um, Things on a deeper level, a spiritual kind of level, sometimes comes up with the Three of Pentacles. Um, you may take a risk on, on, on a partnership. Maybe somebody was a friend, right? And you really kind of got to know each other very well and created this really strong bond, this good, strong foundation. It becomes something else. That's also possible here for some but there are creative uh, solutions to problems with the Three of Pentacles. It is the apprenticeship card, but I don't know. I think there's a shift or a change that comes with that apprenticeship card because you are an authority with the emperor here. It's really kind of putting into practice what you have, um, what you're learning, but taking those first steps. And of course, like I said, by the end of two and a half years, you could be an authority on it. Sometimes it takes longer than that to be an authority, but I think you know what I mean. Um, the outcome is the Queen of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. So the Queen of Swords is um, an air-type person that you may be dealing with. 
this really feels to me like you're giving instruction because you have an authority on something. It really does feel like that to me. And it can be with this Queen of Swords um, person. Now, they are pointy features. They can be an air sign. However, this is my Virgo card. So they're picky, picky, picky. Um, details are important. They have a critical, sharp mind, but they also have a tongue to match. They are um, usually intelligent, refined people. Um, but they can cut people off on a moment's notice. However, if they are a good friend, they will defend you tooth and nail. So it's a good person to have as a friend, maybe less as a manager or, um, uh, or an enemy. No, I wouldn't want her to be my enemy. Uh, because she can, as you can see here, really kick up a, a dust storm on the ground. You can see here there's a storm going on. But it's all clear up in the head area. Um, so it's pretty decisive action. Now this can be you, critical thinking, right? Or it can be somebody you're dealing with. But what comes from it is a very strong, independent person. So this could be you. You could have some critical thinking. Um, your risk maybe pays off, especially on a financial level, because the Nine of Pentacles is uh, a bit of a luxury card. It is Venus in Virgo. And so if it is relationships and marriage and that sort of thing, um, it's the practical things in life that um, are important to you in this case. It's not big showy uh, gestures, uh, bouquets of flower. It's, you know, can you help me make dinner? Can you help me clean the house? Can you do the bookkeeping? You know, how can you practically be a partner if it's romantic? Um, this is a strong, independent person through her own hard work, creates a beautiful, luxurious life for herself. Even the snail carries its house on its back. It's independent. Um, it's, it's Venus in Virgo. Practicalities, the details, but also a, a life of luxury. And now this can also be inheritance. With that, you have the Two of Wands. Two of Wands is um, it's planning. It's plotting and planning. We're at the kind of beginning stages here of um, of a new endeavor, of a new passion. And you may have one thing established already, but you may put something else into um, production. <laughs> For some reason, I said production. Uh, but you might set it in motion. Uh, and you're kind of looking to see where that fits out in the in the larger world. Where can this thing that I have created um, work out in the larger world? How can it how can it help uh, Where does it belong? What are other people doing with this idea? It's plotting and planning. So it is very possible in the next two and a half years you establish something, but then you also get the feeling that you'd like to, um, because remember, this is establishing something. That's the, the, the emperor. So maybe you're thinking, all right, I've got this established. Um, what else can I do? Or how can I take it further? Or I've got this thing established, I want to establish something new, something completely different. What does Spirit want you to know? Open the door to the Kingdom of Heaven, the Christ, 44, which is adds up to 8, which is a power number, and it's empowering. Um, wow. So, um, the Christ number, uh, the Christ energy is something that is beyond ourself. Um, it's, 
it's love unconditionally um, it's asking you to radiate your love without judgment to everyone you meet and this will open doors for you that's interesting because the judgment card isn't even here but if you were to think of of I would say for me the the energy of Christ is the golden rule which is uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you and that's very much something that I believe in and I think it's very Piscean uh, because they have the higher Pisces can um, offer unconditional love and sacrifice or service um, and part of that sacrifice is the ego, right? It's it's kind of like it's not all for me. I'm I'm doing it to help out uh, other people. Really interesting. And the funny thing is, I don't really see it here. I mean, maybe the magician, but even that has very egoic tendencies. It's the I will card. But it's also uh, connecting to your, uh, your, your God self, the spark of God, right, creator. But the Christ energy is different. It's, it's not God. It's the son of God, <laughs> in principle, if you don't believe in it uh, physically. It's the principle of, of unconditional love, 100%. All right two and a half years I think that's nice energy I like that uh, I hope this has been helpful I will return in two weeks with a new moon reading thank you for listening and enjoy your lunar eclipse bye for now